So hello and I welcome you to today's Trading Spotlight webinar here on uh, Friday. It's the 12th of June 2020 and uh, I'm happy to be here once again and to present to you a very, very um, interesting topic and fact, uh, one on so-called range bars. Um, it's, uh, it's in fact a very fascinating topic. We'll see why because we're taking out the so-called time component to some extent, in fact, um, and how this works and why this could be of use for you as traders. Uh, this is what, what will uh, be the topic here in the upcoming 40 to 45 minutes. One second, by the way, I have to say hello to everyone in the chat box. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. By the way, if you watch the recording on YouTube, um, if you like what you see, if you like what I present, please leave a thumb up here. Um, that would be nice. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them right below the video, respectively. Anyone who's not right here in the chat box or questions which might come after the webinar, feel free to ask them in our trading spotlight community, um, which is exactly for such purposes there to ask your questions. And uh, so, yeah, now let's start with today's topic. Let's have a look at the range bars and today's agenda. Um, and uh, what we will um, cover here today is, um, first of all, the question, what are range bars? And then what are the benefits of trading range bars? Is there such thing as a so-called best range bars or range bar um, approach? And uh, then also how to use range bars in your trading um, and uh, trading strategy, in fact, a very short term trading strategy. So usually I'm, yeah, okay, no, that's not, that's probably not the right way to, to, to say. Um, so I'm very active. So compared to um, longer term or swing traders, I'm very, very active. And sometimes I really have to uh, wonder myself whether probably I should be considered a scalper. I mean, um, my average um, 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 frequency of trading per day, trades per day is between three to four uh, in the DAX, for example. And uh, they are opened at the beginning of the trading day and they're closed at the end of the day. And then I start um, again. So it's four trades a day. Um, some probably might say this is close to scalping. In my personal definition, scalpers look at the order book. And uh, since I don't do that, I wouldn't consider myself a scalper, but I'm definitely a day trader. Um, and day trading in, minute, um, in a minute chart, so one minute chart, and this is what the strategy will look at here, the range trading, range bar um, strategy, um, is, uh, yeah, probably also um, it's fine to say, to say uh, um, 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 this is classic day trading. Before we start, um, so what in regards to my person, it's not that interesting. In fact, I'd, I'd say so the most interesting thing probably is that I'm located in Berlin and Germany. If someone wants to know where I come from, what's my educational background, um, how I, um, um, yeah, how I became a trader, if you want. Um, I started, in fact, as a market maker um, um, at a stock exchange. Um, and was was quoting stocks um, um, and then and, and trading the order book, delivering liquidity to those who wanted to trade um, um, stocks in this case. Um, this is this is where I started, where I got started. And then from there, yeah, I took on momentum. And I did an interview around one year ago when we started this Trading Spotlight webinar um, series here. So for further information, I, um, I, I would say read the interview. I think there's, um, there's uh, yeah, plenty of information around my person. Again, I'm located in Berlin in Germany. And that's very interesting when it comes to Admiral Markets, because Admiral Markets is, um, yeah, a global uh, financial service provider, we have to say, with over 20 offices around the globe. And one, in fact, here in Berlin in Germany. Um, and uh, so in the market for nearly 20 years now, no, 19 years of reli reliability, you can see it there. Um, and so why, why is it noteworthy that a broker has 20 offices around the globe? It's noteworthy because when it comes to financial services, it's not uncommon that people want to talk to someone in their native language. And um, I've seen that um, myself um, plenty of times when I talk to customers, to clients, and they ask about a broker, they wanted to talk to someone in their native language. And um, in English, that's probably not such a big issue. Um, and, and, but still, when it comes to, for example, German, or when it comes to other um, languages, then uh, you, you definitely want someone um, you can talk to and, and who knows probably, or who's, who has, has a knowledge in your native language in um, special uh, cases when it comes to financial questions. Um, and that's definitely one thing. I nevertheless have to point out one other thing. Um, 
the really great trading conditions you get when trading with Admiral Markets. Um, and what, what do I mean? Well, quick, it was shortly before um, I, I opened the webinar here, I checked my positions. Um, I, I have positions right now. They are automatically um, um, managed, so I don't need to, to look at them. So whether the market hits the stop loss or take profit, market takes care of that. Um, and why do I want to mention Admiral Markets here? Well, I'm trading um, a day trading strategy with um, high frequent um, DAX trading. So as I already said, three to four trades a day. Um, and I'm using um, the so-called zero offering from Admiral. So there's the, let's call it classic, with the um, um, 0.8 point spread in the DAX, as you can see here, that's the um, um, standard version. But there's also the zero version. And the zero version has a 0.2 spread and you pay a commission on top of that and I use this um, the point two um, um, spread why um, 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 the point two spread is in fact probably more used by active traders who are trading in my case the m5 so m5 minute chart and so why do I say all this well I say it because um, my stop was not stopped out due to this zero offering so to give you a clear number my stop um, currently sits at 990.11 um, in the DAX. And the low of the day, uh, or not the low of the day, but the low of, of the recent move lower. So if you look at a M5 in the DAX right now, um, you will see that the low was at, let me just see here, it's 990.39. So I would have been stopped out um, in the classic version. And even here, I have already a very tight stop, uh, or tight spread. But I'm not stopped out in the um, in this um, in this um, um, environment right here. So it was close. It was just point two, um, um, the difference between hitting my stop and not getting stopped out. And why is this noteworthy? Well, the market is currently um, so volatile that it trades nearly 100 points higher from here. So it would have been let's say pretty disgusting to get stopped out here. And that's one thing why um, Admiral is just noteworthy. So it's one of the most competitive offerings um, uh, when it comes to DAX trading and definitely worth a look. And I think especially such um, occasions as I just um, have seen here um, is, is one reason why it's definitely noteworthy and, and why you should give Admiral a deeper look. So now let's have a look at today's topic. What are range bars? Um, so, First of all, we have to define range bars. And um, as I already said, it's a very, very fascinating topic. It's um, one which is um, fascinating because we have um, range bars here which only consider price. For example, a so-called 10 pip range bar will define that every bar has a range of 10 pips when measured from high to low. What does this mean? Well, it means that time is completely canceled out, which means a new range bar is only shown if the price breaks out of this range. So for example, um, if you say 10 pip, the market has to move 10 pips in your direction, or not in your direction, but in direction um, um, of, of whatever direction the market is right now, up or down, and then the next bar appears. And so each bar has a high and low that is defined based on the input price level. Um, and a new range bar opens outside the high or the low of the previous bar, and a range bar closes at the high or at the low. So there's no such thing as wicks, for example, that's what it said. And it only appears in your chart once this range, you have to define yourself before, once this um, um, range is fulfilled, let's say. And, and once the market moved 10 pips in this example in your direction or in direction of the market up or down, in fact. So, um, and what I have here is an example of a range bar um, chart, in fact, how, how this looks like. Um, and it, it, at first glance, looks like, like a classic um, um, candlestick chart. So there's no, no, um, um, no, no, no real, no, no such thing as, um, as a big difference. By the way, I'm, I just said that there's no wicks and, and no, um, uh, that there's no wicks, right? That's not true or shadows and wicks. Uh, that's not true, obviously. So you can see it here, by the way. So it, it, it um, means that the market has to have a width from high to low, in fact, and that then the, the, the range bar appears in your chart. So it's not necessary that it opens here um, at the high and closes at the low or the other way around, by the way. So I'm sorry that there was something I, um, uh, I what's the word for this? Um, I remember from, from uh, so-called Renko charts. So we had a webinar on Renko's too. Um, but in case of range bars, there's a difference. There are shadows and there are wicks, obviously. 
Okay, but let's come back. So at first glance, it really looks like as if um, the chart looks the same um, as a candlestick chart, and there's no such big difference. But um, the the yeah the the um, uh, interesting thing is in the moment once we once we see uh, once these these charts appear here. So while it looks as if that in, in this case it's the M1, so it's a minute chart. It looks as if here on the x axis there is um, um, every every um, um, price or no every time there is a price or respectively a candle shown in the chart. Um, this is just at first glance. So in fact, this is kind of, a, we can call it an overlay um, in, into your chart, in fact. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not the case that um, every, every minute is um, here showing one, one candle. You can, by the way, also see that when you look um, at the chart, it's an M1, um, and you don't see any kind of, um, how can we call this, um, uh, dojis. Right, so um, I mean, th there's a chance that there will be a pure doji because um, if the wick and the shadow is long enough and more than 10 pips in this case, so it would appear here too. So that's very close to a doji, but still, um, you don't see um, a candles when it comes to um, measuring it from 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 the low to the high, which are below 10 pips. This is how we um, defined it, or in in case of of my range bar, um, I screenshot it here. So it's a 10 pip. Um, um, with from high to low in this case, so in every candle. Um, so, and uh, now we want to look at the benefits. I think um, the, the overall concept is, is clear now. Um, and, and we want to dig deeper a little um, into this in a, in a few minutes. But first of all, let's have a look now at the benefits because some of you might probably say, and you have to really um, think about it for a while and, and, and get used to it, let's say, because usually time is a very important component, um, at least in my training. So just to give you an example. Um, when I, for example, uh, trade, I know the average length of every trade I make. So that means, let's take a simple example. Let's say um, the average trade duration in my case is four hours. Um, and then there's now my chance to say, um, or there's, there's my, my documentation of my trading, my trading journal, which, which, which tracks this, this um, average trade duration. And then I, I um, analyze my trading and I find out once the market is not showing a positive um, force sign when it comes to the PNL um, after let's say 30 minutes, um, what, what, this, what does this mean? Well, after 30 minutes, I then see what's, what's the most likely outcome of, of the trade. Will it be a winner or will it be a loser? If my documentation now shows that um, after 30 minutes, once the PNL is negative, um, the overall trade um, result is negative too. The trade gets stopped out, whatever. And this is the case in, let's say, 30% of the cases. Well, you can see, okay, great. I know, I now know that once the market does not show um, um, a positive force sign after 30 minutes, um, I should probably at least scale out of the position. Let's say you have two contracts, take out one half um, and then leave the other half uh, running. And the target by, by doing that is that you say, okay, great, um, now I'm optimizing the overall expected value of my strategy. Probably I am already profitable. So I already have a positive expectancy in my trading, but still it probably might make sense to say, okay, um, if I take out here half of the position right now with the expectation that the trade will show a negative force sign at the end of the average trade duration, at the end of the trade, after not showing a positive source force sign after 30 minutes, that's a very valuable information. I only get, by the way, when I'm when I'm, I'm documenting my trail, uh, my, my trading well and 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 um, I'm very um, accurately. So uh, and thus you can already see. Time is very is a very very valuable um, 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 component, and uh, it's it's definitely something you you should have a deep look at. And it's um, at first glance not really um, it's not intuitive to take out this component when it comes to range bars. But range bar trading has still some benefits, um, since removing time from charts means that range bars only show on the charts once there's sufficient volatility. So it's very um, um, likely, or not likely, but it's definitely the case. If you say the range um, has to be minimum 10 pips so that such a bar appears, well, that means that, that there must be a certain level of volatility, which makes this 
approach very interesting for those traders saying i'd like to um, um or I'm, I'm a volatility trader let's call it so i need a certain level of volatility and um thus use this information then to uh, gain my edge and, and then to trade the markets and in the case of range bars this is exactly what's what's given in this case because um it takes out the time component and only the bar appears once there is a certain movement in the market which means there is sufficient volatility in fact so low volatility means that development of a range bar can take some time until the candle is visible then or the bar is visible in your chart why high volatility means that range bars appear quite quickly in fact so it's not limited to let's say 10 pips but it can also be that the market um, um has a 15 20 25 50 pip range um depending on the news which might um, come over the ticker here but it's a uh, minimum 10 pips so the move has to be minimum 10 pips and um, in in high volatile market environments here range bars appear quite quickly then depending on the input parameters from the trader so which means that once you um, have let's say um, a three pip range bar and say the the the, the range of the um, or the the width of the candle from, from high to low needs to be minimum three pips. Well, that's uh, fairly quickly um, um, uh, delivered in fact. And uh, so what do range bars do? Is in fact they remove noise and size sideways price action from the chart. In fact, so they taking that out. Um, they taking this this component out and. Okay, um, so that's a very interesting feedback. I, I could imagine, um, since it's a quite um, 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 abstract topic, that uh, that's one of the reasons. So if you say you don't understand anything, could you probably um, um, give some details what exactly you don't understand? So probably I can answer that question. So if you, if you would define what you don't understand, that would be um, helpful in this case for me to, to um, help you. Um, even though I could imagine that the next chart probably shows you um, some or gives you more and a deeper understanding and a better idea of what this range bar concept is about um, but in general we can say range bars um, once they have to 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 give you um, um, a certain level of volatility they are looking for a high level or higher level than volatility filtering out the noise and also filtering out um, most of the sideways price action which is usually as a time of low volatility and thus um, not giving you, um, um, uh, yeah, any 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 range bars appearing on the chart since the um, high to low difference is just not enough so that a, that the bar appears. So, so what I have here now is the same screenshot once again, um, and there I I've now taken in the the, um, uh, the time here in this case and uh, what we have in this example is that I've um, um, put in here this cycle this this um, uh, yeah cycle ellipse whatever and you have three bars here or three candles and again the range bar the difference what we have here is 10 pips okay so each bar so that it appears in the chart has to have a difference from high to low of 10 pips minimum okay so now we have three candles the first here this candle on the left in this um, 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 cycle uh, it appears at 1156 that's the first candle um, so and now the next candle the next bar appears here 21 minutes later why does it appear 21 minutes later? Because it took 21 minutes for the market to have a width of the range from high to low of 10 pips and more than that. It took 21 minutes until this happened, in fact. So the next candle, the next bar appears once this 10 pip range is given then. And then the next candle here appears again 42, um, um, 42 minutes later. So the next is 12.59 in this case. So that's here, the one at the right side. So for these three candles to appear in a one minute chart, in fact, um, and for, for um, 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 this, this, well, some might probably call it a pattern um, to, to occur here, it nearly took one hour to build this. That means um, nothing more, in fact, than uh, I took the screenshot, obviously, during um, a time of very low 
um, uh, volatility. That's, that's the main information we get from here. Still, when you look here at the, at a candlestick chart, I have not um, um, screenshotted it, but if you look at the candlestick chart, what you would likely see is price action, which goes sideways. And then rather sooner or later, the market is probably breaking out or drifting higher until here, um, um, this, this occurs in the chart, this pattern of three rising candles or three rise, rising bars appears in fact. So these candles, these three candles, 1156, 1217 and 1259, they appeared after this 10 pips range was reached. Um, and this is already what you now understand when I say they filter out the noise. So one hour of one minute, um, um, uh, um, one hour of one minute candles means there's usually 60 candles, 61 minute candles. And um, obviously most of them, so this is a 30 pips move here in this case. So most of them would have been sideways action or a drift higher in fact. Here they are completely filtered out because um, it says, I only appear, the bar only appears once this 10 pips range is reached, in fact, and then appears in your chart and is visible. So now there's a question which usually comes to your mind right, right here. Is there such a thing um, as a best range bar? So one where I say this is the range bar you should use and this is um, a quite good chance that you will be profitable in your trading. Um, the answer is no. But Still, it makes sense to adapt range bars depending on the horizon of a trader. So, which means, for example, higher range bar. So, meaning that the, the higher uh, the the input parameters here, um, that you if you use higher range bars, that this shows a longer time span corresponding with higher price action respective volatility. That's also something. It's not necessary that you trade based on that. Even though in the next slide I will present to you a trading strategy, but but it's also quite useful probably is that you will say, I use this, this range bar indicator as a filter for my trading. So probably you're trading a breakout system, a range breakout system, whatever. So I, for example, the reason I use this example is because I am, um, I'm, I'm, I'm working well, or I am corresponding really well. My, my personality also corresponds really well with, uh, with, with um, um, trading breakouts and, and, and range trading or, range open range breakouts let's call it um so range trading not but i wait for a range to appear and once the market breaks out in one or the other direction i usually trade it quite well based on my um, um um yeah based on my knowledge based on my trading journal so i can i can see that i'm i'm working well with this and i'm 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 profitable trading this so <clears throat> and now the thing is um why do i say this well Usually when you trade some approach like the open range approach, um, you will see what I'm talking to, by the way, when looking at the uh, trading spotlight community. So there is a DAX approach and an S&P 500 approach and both, both are based on um, um, open range setups. So now what we could do is, or what we already find out, found out in the past was that these approaches don't correspond well with times of low volatility. So what you usually wanna see is that the market builds this range and then breaks out dynamically in one or the other direction. And this is, this is then the breakout you want to trade, in fact. The only thing is, if there's no such thing as volatility or if, if volatility is really low, let's say, um, usually these strategies do not work really well. Um, what range bars can do now is, or what, what, how you can use, use them is, in fact, that you say, I want to see during a certain period of time, a range bar appear, um, and it has to make sure it only appears once a certain level of volatility is reached, respectively, once the market marks a certain um, 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 trading width, uh, or let's say the high and the low, the difference is, is wide enough, so that this is then the moment once I say market conditions are good for me, or now I, I, I find myself in an advantageous um, environment and based on this advantageous environment, I trade the breakout in one or the other direction. So that acts as kind of a, as a filter. Once the break appears, once volatility is low, um, you probably skip the trade or re at least reduce the position size since the market environment is not profitably tradable for you and the, the breakout approach. So this is also something how you could use range bars in this case. And uh, since they are, they are aiming on volatility and once you know 
who you are and what you trade. And you know, based on that information, that you um, need volatility to appear or to, to, to show volatil that volatility shows at a certain level um, or is at a certain level, that this is then the moment uh, once you say, okay, these range bars can also work as an indicator, in fact. So lower range bars, on the other hand, show a shorter time span, respectively, less price action and volatility is needed before a new range bar appears. And uh, so roughly speaking, you can say that a range bar of 18, for example, will take longer to appear than a range bar of three. I already said this. And a range bar of 18 chart targets um, to determine the trend, a range bar of three, let me, let me just probably chart targets. Um, so a range bar of 18, um, of, of 18 charts, that means um, um, a range bar which, which needs a high and low difference of 18. Okay, let's just put it that way probably. That's a little irritating if I say chart targets. Um, so it's more like you, you, you try to determine the trend um, here and the range bar of three then, a lower um, range bar difference there, is uh, aiming to find entries, for example, after a pullback. We will combine this, by the way, in a few seconds. You will see this during the trading approach. You probably, first of all, will, will wonder why, before we now start um, to show this, this strategy, you probably want to um, know what can you find information, respectively, where you, is there such thing as a range bar indicator? And in fact, um, it is. Let me just go over here. So I already prepared the website. I will um, share the link here in the chat box. Um, I will call this Supreme Edition because it's uh, included in the Supreme Edition, but you have to, to um, look a little and, and, and search for a while um, how to find this. So what you do, what you can do is go to admiralmarkets.com if you're right now watching the recording of the webinar um, and, and you can't find the uh, link in the chat box, obviously. Um, then you go to platforms and then you click on the MetaTrader Supreme Edition. And once you're there, you have, let me probably just go that way. Why not? So what you then have is um, you have the, the indicator um, um, box, let's call it. Um, so probably you heard about this. This is um, um, an add-on which you can use for free, download for free, and then integrate in your trading uh, platform um, in your MetaTrader 4, respectively MetaTrader 5. And the great thing about this is that uh, it, it, it upgrades, significantly upgrades the quite old, let's say, MT4, MT5, in fact. So um, if, especially if you're a discretionary trader and if you're more active, then the Supreme Edition is a definitely must for you. And uh, you should definitely give it a deeper look, especially due to the so-called mini terminal um, you find within this. And uh, so now if you scroll down a little, there you have the mini terminal. That's what I was referring to. You can find here, the indicator package. You probably remember this here. This is the Renko chart we were um, uh, looking at here, in fact. And if we click on learn more, uh, you now have the chance to scroll down within this indicator package and you will see um, how massive this package is. And it's completely available for free. So if you have a MetaTrader 4 or 5, I highly recommend um, checking out the Supreme um, add-on package, in fact, for your trading, in fact. And now you scroll and you scroll and you scroll and you scroll. And then at 14, you will have the chance to the mini chart indicator. And there you have an explanation how to, how to, um, yeah, how to set up the settings for this. And here there is uh, the chart type explanation. And there you see it's the so-called range charts you're uh, looking at. And uh, you will see here, new candles are only being drawn when the price moves in either direction by a set number of pips. That's exactly how we define range bars, in fact. And stacking range charts works by the same principle, but in this case, candles um, pointing in the same direction are being combined into one candles. So this is where you find it. So just um, check out the website, atmomarkets.com, go to the um, uh, Supreme Edition, and then use the, uh, or look for the indicator package and there, go to 14.2 and there you have the range charts in fact. Respectively, above that 14.1, you see how to set up this mini chart in fact. So now let's come back to this um, um, strategy idea um, and what we could do. And uh, we, again, it's a very active trading strategy I now present to you. Um, I, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't um, prepared one uh, here for, for the DAX, um, in fact, but I have prepared one for a EURUSD. So this is what we want to do right now. Um, 
here Franjo is asking on a, on a DAX 30 price uh, with range bars in one day. Um, I've prepared one chart, um, a screenshot here from, from EURUSD on M1 um, showing you range bars indicators, but it's duplicable if you want. My, one main reason I want to trade here EURUSD in fact is due to um, uh, especially the trend stability once there is a trend showing. And the, the DAX has um, a tendency of uh, quite erratic moves from time to time. So um, I'd, I'd really like to, to focus here on a deep and, and very liquid and not so erratic um, market in this case EURUSD respectively FX them. And uh, so what we do in this um, um, trading setup is we look at EURUSD, we look at M1. So it's a very, very active uh, traded um, um, setup, in fact. And then we have the range bars indicator and we use the aggregation of four. What we four means you need a four pip range in one or the other direction from high to low that a bar appears. And then we also use indicators, standard indicators. It's one is the MACD. Um, so it's the standard aggregation 12, 26, and 9. We already had a webinar on this, or several webinars, in fact. So it was not just only me um, who combined the MACD here with the slow stochastic and a strategy um, webinar, but there was also Paul, I think. Or was it Marcus? Paul? Marcus? One of them, uh, at least, um, um, had a webinar on, on the MACD. And then we use the EMA 40, respectively, the EMA 120. So EMA is the exponential moving average. So all of these, MACD and EMA, is available for free and in and, and, and a standard version, let's say. So not just for free, but the standard um, version here um, in the in the MetaTrader. And uh, let me just illustrate the long scenario here to um, which we want to go through. We say, if the EMA is bigger than the EMA 120 and, by the way, so and this is a little unfortunate. So usually it should be um, in bold so that you see that these two have to um, 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 work together. So if EMA is um, 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 smaller than the EMA, EMA 40 is smaller than the EMA 120, but the MACD, so the MACD histogram trades above the signal line, no trade is generated since both um, um, have to be true. Both have to be true, show, show true values here. So if EMA 40 is greater than EMA 120 and the MACD histogram trades above the signal line, um, we have a Euro USD long with a stop below the last relative low. And that's exactly what we do. And uh, then you will also see once we exit the trade again, this is once here, the histogram, um, this, this line is, is um, uh, crossing back um, um, below the signal line. So what do I mean by that? Let's just go through this here. So first of all, <clears throat> We have to see the blue line is the EMA 40, while the red line is the EMA 120. So if the EMA 40 trades above the EMA 120, we are looking for long trades. That's what we do. And what we then see is here that the histogram in case of um, 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 the MACD here is trading above the signal line. So the red dotted line, this is the signal line. And once the histogram, these gray columns here trade above that and this is given we wait until a range bar crosses then here in fact above the ema 40 and this is our long trigger so we take the long trade in this example once this this um um how's the word for this uh once this setup is given and now we had we, we said that we place the stop here below the last relative low so which is eight 8.33, which means that we have a risk in this case of 36 pips, in fact. And what we then do, and, and this is the great thing about this range bars um, um, indicator setup. So what we, what we usually have is the market here um, showing not just um, a higher level of volatility once these bars appear, but there's also a stronger trend then occurring in one or the other direction. So in a long scenario, we, we see usually the market then trend higher from there after this break occurs here. And what we do is we keep the position open and we trade with the trend as um, long as here this setup is given and there is the MACD histogram trading above the signal line. And once here, the market starts to top out, let's say, or looks a little, in this case, extended on the upside, what we usually, or what we then do is we take out the trade. So here you can see the histogram crosses back below the signal line. And once this is given, 
we take out the trade, which in this case would have been 0940, in fact. Um, and yeah, so in fact, that's, 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 that's how we trade. So um, this is the, the optimal scenario. We can also see here, for example, um, we also had this, this um, 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 setup given here. You have to really closely look. So it's a screenshot. So unfortunately, it's not that, that, that clear in fact. But if you closely watch here, you can see that, for example, the setup was given here too. Since the blue line, the EMA 40 was trading above the EMA 120. And there you had the long signal given uh, with the last stop being placed here. And now the thing is that obviously there was no such thing as trailing the stop to break even or something because the market did not take off. But it, it, it crossed back here. We were not stopped out in this case, by the way. So um, why did we take the trade? Because here the histogram then crossed back below the signal line. So that was, um, um, yeah, it was a quick in and out in this case. So we, we are in and through the market. The market does not take off. And so we are fairly quickly out of the trade, especially in such an environment where, yeah, in, in, in this case, there is some, some tendency to a choppy market environment. And, and then the market is not then strongly trending in one direction and volatility is not really picking up. This is the case here in this scenario. Um, and uh, yeah, this is in fact how you can play around with this a little. So why, for example, is uh, no signal being created here? Well, because the histogram is trading below the signal line. So there's no trading setup given. Then you can see here, okay, great. There is somewhere um, 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 an example being generated or a trade being generated with a stop being placed somewhere here or here, depending on where you define the last relative low. In my case, it would be probably here. And then you're taking out the trade once the market crosses back along, uh, below the, the histogram, uh, the signal line, the histogram crosses back below the signal line again. Um, and this is how the setup works, in fact. So, and it's obviously aiming on um, trying to capture a trend and strong momentum than in direction of the trend. Um, and it's more like, um, you probably remember once, once we, we looked at um, price action, and there was um, um, a differentiation I made. I said, there's uh, trends, there's progression, and there's regression. Um, and the thing is now that this setup here looks to try to um, get the meat out of the middle of a trend. So we are looking at a progressive move here. We're trading the progression in a different way and how the signal is generated. So it's not purely price action based, um, but this is an approach which is looking, trying to capture the progressive move, in fact, in a trend. It's not looking at the trend itself, but it's looking at the, at the progressive move and the meat in the middle, let's say. I think that's probably a fair way to, to, uh, to put it in, in this case. Yeah, so that's it. Um, let me just check the chat box once again, by the way. Let me just see here. Where is the chat box? Somehow I lost it. So are there any questions? Not so far, probably once again here. No, okay, perfect. Yeah, probably then it's time to sum things up. Uh, look at the summary. So once again, range bars only consider price. So they're filtering out time, the time component. Um, and for example, a 10 pip range bar will define that every bar has a range of 10 pips when measured from high to low. Range bars remove the time from the chart, the time component, meaning that the range bar only shows um, on the chart once there's sufficient volatility. And by the way, now there's a question. Um, if this system works with stocks, I haven't checked it. Um, and one main reason is, and the main focus, I, I uh, look here at FX in case um, of, of, um, um, of, of such intraday setups is that once I trade stocks, I usually trade them in a longer time frame, so it's it's uh, it's for me stocks are more kind of an investment vehicle. Let's probably say that's probably a fair way to put it. Um, so it's not something I trade intraday, um, and that's one reason I I, I can answer the question. Um, could imagine them to work since uh, stocks have a tendency once um, they they start to trend, then that that there's strong trends developing in one or the other direction. So it could be. Um, with a likelihood of let's say greater 50% that it, that it works, um, uh, that the, the approach works, but I can't answer uh, that question for sure if it works for stocks, but works for FX, um, that's, that's definitely something due to the trend stability. Once there is a trend, once there is increasing volatility as we've seen now over the last months, um, then this system is definitely um, um, worth to give it a deeper look. 
Um, and yeah, so meaning that range bars only show on the chart once there's sufficient volatility and uh, range bars due to that remove the noise and the sideways action here um, from, from the chart. There is no such thing as a perfect range bar. So it depends on what kind of trader you are. So um, it's not taking away the responsibility from, from, your, from, your, from your trading. Um, you have to make sure that you, that you um, still answer the question for yourself, who am I and which trading approach um, suits my personality? Um, and thus, it makes sense to adopt range bars depending on the horizon of a trader, especially. And um, in this case, higher range bars for trend identification, for example, and then lower range bars to time entries and better get into the market and out of the market. Next webinar will be on Monday with Paul. Um, so he will talk about chaos theory, in fact. So I, by the way, will also uh, look into chaos the theory here um, in another webinar. So hopefully we will um, um, build our webinars um, on each other, let's say. And uh, he will answer the questions. What is chaos theory? How, do, um, how does it manifest in trading and how we can analyze markets using chaos theory? How we, can we trade markets using chaos theory? Um, and he will be here on Monday, the 15th of June, 2 p.m. London, same time as today. And uh, all the people who are here in the webinar right now, um, they don't need to do anything, but just check the inbox for the webinar link. Um, it's, a, it's a reoccurring um, um, webinar. For all those um, watching now the recording on YouTube, feel free to go to abnormarkets.com. Um, Go to the Educations tab and there to the Webinars tab and there you'll find Trading Spotlight webinar where you can register for these webinars with Paul, Marcus and me every Monday, every Wednesday and every Friday. Um, here's the website, abnormarkets.com for further information. These are the contact details from abnormarkets and uh, here's the risk disclaimer at the end and um, that's it from my end. So all the best, have a nice weekend, happy trading, watch your stops, I look forward to uh, to the next webinar next week on uh, on Friday. All the best. See you and bye-bye.